My name is Santiago. I am a blacksmith. That is a person who works with iron and steel, the black metals. We are building a blockhouse. In my language, uh, Espanol, that is called a casa fuerte, a strong house. It has thick walls, thick enough to stop musket balls and arrows. It also has firing slits so that the soldiers can stand on a platform and shoot their muskets out through the walls. We need the blockhouse. We have to protect this village and also this province, the village of San Luis and the province of Appalachia. We have uh, hostile neighbors, the, all of the tribes that we call the Creek and also the English from Carolina who would love to own this property. It's a patrol base. A patrol is a group of soldiers that goes out looking for the enemy and uh, trying to gather information. It's also a briefing area for the patrols. They get their instructions there and they pick up their supplies, their ammunition and their food for the trip. It's also a living space for the soldiers. The soldiers live upstairs and they eat at the tables downstairs. Uh, the cleared area around the blockhouse and the blockhouse itself is frequently used for training of the soldiers. There are two, of, two blacksmiths here, myself, Santiago, and my partner, Carlos. We work under the direction of our master in, in our, our home shop. Two of us are needed because there's very much work that has to be done, but also because there are some very large items that need to be made and making a large item is uh, frequently helpful to have someone act as a striker. Now, a striker is a blacksmith who wields a large two-handed hammer, and he works with the person who is making the project. He will stand on this side of the anvil and strike like this, while the smith who owns the project will be standing over here <coughs> striking. When I strike here, the striker will strike in that same spot. If I strike hard, he will strike hard. If I strike gently, he will strike gently. Oh, welcome, come on in. Blacksmiths furnished all of the iron work to hold this this uh, large building together. We have heavy doors, and those heavy doors are held shut by a very strong bar, and that bar fits into a pair of heavy brackets, one here and one on the other, the other side there. And that makes this door be able to stand up to a battering ram. Now a battering ram, would be a large log held by several men uh, and it would have handles on it so that they could swing it like that. They are swinging it against the door to try to knock that door down. To defend the fort, the soldiers wanted guns mounted on the corners of the roof and they wanted those guns mounted on swivels and that swivel mounted on an arm so that they could move it around and aim it wherever they needed to. The blacksmiths made the swivels, they made the arm that the swivel was mounted to, and they made the bracket for fastening that arm to the outside wall of the fort. After dark we need lighting. Uh, we have sconces that hold a large candle and they are made of iron and they are, are fastened to the wall. It, probably at about this level so that they spread the light out. We also use candlesticks. A candlestick holds a candle or maybe a couple of candles and can sit on a table or it can be picked up and carried around. Now this one is made of clay, but they are frequently also made of iron. If we're going outdoors, we will need a lantern. Now this lantern right here uh, has a lot of holes in it that allow some of the light to get out and allow air to get in 
so that the candle doesn't go out. But if we need light in the particular direction that we're walking, we can open this door and it's gonna light in that direction. But if I were carrying this lantern like this, my fingers would be burning because there is a candle right in here and, and a flame. So if I were carrying that lantern, I would probably carry it like this with a cord or a metal loop or something like that so that I don't burn my fingers. This blockhouse is built of wood frame construction. So we need a supply of nails and spikes, which the blacksmiths make. But there are other craftsmen that are involved in the building of this building. There are loggers, there are sawyers, hewers, and carpenters. Now the logger travels several leagues to the north, to the edge of the wood, where he cuts down trees to provide logs. He provides those logs to the sawyers and to the hewers. Now the sawyer is the one who produces lumber. He takes the logs and with his helper and this two-handed saw, he rips those logs. Now ripping means that he cuts in line with the grain of the wood. He rips the logs and produces lumber. Now these saws are made in a blacksmith shop, but not a regular blacksmith shop, in a shop that specializes in saw making and has a number of tools that are for that very purpose. The hewers hew the logs to form square beams and pillars. They use an ax to cut notches into the log. They cut those notches to a line that they make on the log so that they know how deep to cut. And then he hews that log using a broad ax. This ax right here. Now this ax is, is flat and it's only sharpened on one side. And it is used something like this. The hewer walks along the edge of the log and hews it like this. He cuts using those notches and he forms a square beam. Now, both of these axes are made of iron, but the edge is made of steel because steel is hard enough to be sharp and the iron is not. This part would be iron, just this part right here would be steel and it would be welded in place. The carpenters actually do the construction. They take the lumber from the sawyers, they take the beams and columns from the hewers, and they take the nails, spikes, hinges, and other fittings from us, the blacksmiths. And they put it all together. All the craftsmen's iron and steel tools are made by the blacksmith. I make the carpenter's hammer, his chisels, his saws, his draw knives. I make the sawyer's axes, broad axes, and I make a barking tool for him so that he can trim the bark off of the log if he needs to. The hewer, uh, has his ax and his broad ax made by the blacksmith. And of course, the loggers axes and saws and all of the other craftsmen's metal tools as well. Now, there are people who question whether we needed to have blacksmiths on site. Couldn't we order the materials that we need from somewhere else? Well, let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, the items that are needed come in several categories. First of all, there are routine items. Routine items would be nails and spikes that get used on just about every job. And we could certainly order a sufficient quantity of them to come from another shop. And anticipated items, things that we know for sure that we're going to need, if we also know the measurements for them, we could have them made. But unexpected items, things that we discover that we need or things that uh, the fitting is different from what we had anticipated, that would cause quite a delay to get the order down to the, blacks, uh, the blacksmith that's making it uh, and get it back up here. There would be a delay waiting for a ship to leave uh, 
from St. Mark's to go wherever he has to go. Uh, there would be the time for the blacksmith there to make the items. Then there would be a wait for another ship coming back this way. And all of that would cause delay. There are also repairs and replacements. Uh, some of our loggers, when they were crossing uh, a river, they dropped a box off of the ox cart and that box contained two or three of their axes. And we had to make some new axes to replace them. So those are unexpected things that happened. So the decision was made to have blacksmiths on the site. So the decision was made to hire the smiths to work locally. That saved money and those blacksmiths were on the spot so there was no delay and the blacksmith is there so he can see the problem and design a solution and take whatever measurements he need. So building this blockhouse was a community effort. It took carpenters to do the woodwork. It took sawyers to produce the lumber. It took hewers to produce the beams and columns. It took the blacksmith to produce all of the fittings and the nails and spikes and the tools that you saw. And of course, there were other people involved because there was labor to be done. So this was really and truly a community effort.